Send them their emails to idea at wretched.org if you'd be so kind. And please be praying for Jimmy. He is preaching at the funeral of his beloved grandfather. That, whew, that requires some undergirding for our brother who's preaching the gospel while talking about the death of a beloved family member. Be praying for Jimmy and send your emails to idea at wretched.org. We got ourselves here a correction, which I happily accept. You may recall the other day we were having a conversation about David Platt and what's going on at McLean Bible Church. David has, this is, this is exactly the point. David Platt has introduced some views. I'm keeping this very broad and generic for a reason. He's introduced some views that are causing division in the church, specifically racial division and racial issues in the church. What is the correct way to understand critical race theory, intersectionality, systemic racism, white privilege, white supremacy, anti-racism. That that whole conversation David brought into his church and now I believe is seeing the effect of what CRT is. Not what it does, but what it is. It's a dividing device. It is a mechanism that is built for destruction. That's what critical race theory is. The effect of it is that it does cause division. And I fear that's exactly what they're seeing at McLean Bible Church. Big division, acrimony, lawsuits because of CRT. And David Platt, I, I have no doubt, brought introduced these teachings with the best of intentions. But even with the best of intentions, and even if... Some of his understandings of the whole issue are right, let's say. Congratulations, you've got yourself division. That's exactly what it is. Not just what it does, it's what it is. Therefore, my opinion about the whole shebang is that if you introduce any element of it or in these conversations that we are supposed to be having, use any of the terms that are currently associated with critical race theory, pastor, your church is going to be split. Lately, been reading some articles, some presentations, some sermons even, from different individuals who are further to the left on the subject than I am. I, I want to see where they're at in their thinking. And I've noticed something that is so consistent, and these are smart guys that I'm studying, their definitions are wildly different. For instance, when I say systemic racism, what do you think that is? Most likely, not, not everybody, but most likely you would say, well, the systems are racist. And then you'd argue, well, systems can't be racist, but sure, there used to be some laws, but no more. Jim Crow, gone, slavery, abolished. So there are, there are no systems that are intrinsically racist anymore. Therefore, systemic racism doesn't exist. That's probably how you view it. But I've been reading some pretty smart people who, again, more to the left than I am, and not, not crazy libs, but just more to the left than I am, who would say systemic racism is actually just the effects of, of systems that used to be oppressive or racist. That's a big difference, isn't it? That, that's, that's a huge chasm. Now, what happens if you, let's say David Platt came in and said, uh, I, I, I believe in systemic racism. Depending on your understanding of it, you're either going to cheer or jeer. But what is, it, what is the effect of it? It causes division. Why? Because that's what it is. Not what it does. It's what it is. It's, it's a divider. It's, it's built that way for obfuscation, confusion, ongoing conversations that have no destination. That is what it is intended to be and do. And if you bring it into your church any way, shape, or form, it's going to do it to you too. There's another mega church, not going to mention its name because I don't have this confirmed yet, 
that I think is also seeing a big divide over this subject. And again, I actually know the people at that church, well-intentioned, and they're finding themselves with their house burning down. And I'm, well, hey, well, we were just trying to have a conversation. Uh-oh, you said you were going to have a conversation. Congratulations. In a mild sense, you've just imported what CRT is, and you're feeling the effect of it. That is what the, the, the thing is that we're dealing with, a destroyer, a divider. And no matter what the intentions are, and I'm sure David Platt's intentions were certainly noble and good, it, it's, it's going to wreck your church. It can't help it. it, it <laughs> pour battery acid on a banana. Well, I... I all I wanted to do was add some nutrients to the banana. It's going to destroy it. It's going to melt it down because that's what it does. It's in its DNA, its nature. And that is true with CRT. David Platt, I fear, is feeling the effects of what he has brought into his own church. And I mentioned the other day, because I read it on actually two different sources, that David Platt from the pulpit said, this is no longer McLean Bible Church, this is Melanin Bible Church. And while it is true that he did say that, context, context, context. This is an email sent in from Rebecca. I had earlier seen that quote attributed to him by someone on Twitter and wanted to find out if it was true. If it were true. At any rate, I listened to the first part of the sermon from July 4th online. And while he did voice those words, he was actually reading an email that had circulated from people who were being critical of him who said that. And he was grieved by it. And then Rebecca says, may I lovingly suggest that though we may have some issues with David Platt, we need to be careful not to accuse him of saying something he did not say. Therefore, Rebecca, I'm reading your letter because you're absolutely right. There's, there's, there's no reason to do that, especially to somebody who is a brother. Now, speaking of that, receive some emails sent to idea at wretched.org, who, when we were having this conversation about David Platt and McLean Bible Church, I called him a brother, and people went, uh-uh, no, he's not. And I think that there are two things that we need to think through really clearly. Number one, when an individual on paper is orthodox, it puts him into not a fortress where he, he, he cannot be accused of anything, but it sets off a different conversation. If you're dealing with somebody, they're in an apostate movement, it's like, well, this is pretty easy because if you're in the movement and you adhere to the movement's teachings, well, then you're apostate too. This is different. There's no question David Platt is orthodox. In fact, you would probably be shocked that he probably aligns with you really, really closely. And that means I'm going to be really, really, really slow to suggest that somebody's not a brother when just on paper in the file cabinet they're orthodox. However, we understand that just because that's what you say on paper doesn't mean that's what it's lived out, which brings us to consideration number two. How are we going to be treating one another on this subject? This is, this has got to be worked through. Otherwise, you are going to be a church of one. That, that's where we're headed with this. If we don't have an understanding. Now, I, I don't want a broad welcome mat for people who are importing. We don't want CRT in, period. But you, you know somebody who maybe adheres to a component of it. What do you do with them? And might I suggest that unless there is a direct bullseye to orthodoxy, to an essential doctrine, you may not like it, but it doesn't make them a heretic. For instance, you meet somebody, they say they're a Christian, but they believe in big government. They believe in higher taxes. Would you call them a heretic? No. You disagree with them politically, socially, and you can show them from the Bible why you're right. But you wouldn't say, therefore, you're not a brother. Now, if somebody said, I'm a Christian and I'm pro-abortion, hold on, big problem here. We need to check out your education level and understand why it is you would say that you're a Christian who is in favor of the taking of an innocent human being's life. It's a different issue. Okay, 
somebody that you know says that they believe in some aspect of CRT, if it isn't hitting the, the essential of the faith connected to faith alone, grace alone, Christ alone, revealed in Scripture alone, to the glory of God alone, the nature, the character of God, the nature of Jesus Christ, if it isn't hitting that, <laughs> um, you're going to have to wait to slap the label of not a brother onto that. You're going to have, you're just going to have to wait. You know, maybe you can put him in a category of, we're concerned. We're concerned. And that's what I would say about David Platt. I'm, I'm concerned for that brother. But he is a brother until he demonstrates otherwise by firing at an essential. Could that happen? I certainly hope not. Could. I hope not. But until that day comes, um, we're going to, we're going to have to remember what is social, what is political, and what is theological. This is Wretched Radio. Hey, I'm Todd. I'm going to be your Uber driver. What's your destination? Uh, 2054 Kemple Lane. No, 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 no. Your eternal destination. The liberals, they brought in Pelagianism, it's the old Sabellian heresy, denying the Trinitarian Godhead. Three persons, one God, not to the Sabellians, no. They would say that it's actually just one God. Please, somebody,